Welcome back to your Algebra 1 Semester 1 Final Review. Just a friendly reminder that the number that's on this video might not match the one that's on your page, but as long as the problem matches, it doesn't really matter. Um, the problem number on YouTube, though, should match your sheet. I, that's easy enough for me to adjust every year, but I'm definitely not re-recording these every year. Um, when we go through these problems, I always try to give you two ways to do it. And I'm not saying one way is easier than the other way, but um, some people respond better to alternate methods, and I don't want to force you to do the problem in one way. So we are going to look at two ways for this. Um, figure out your favorite way and remember how to do it. So here we go. Which equation of the line passes through these two given points? Well, before we even do any math here, we should probably figure out what form all these equations are in. And to me, it looks like all of these equations are in the hk form, m x minus h plus k. And just a friendly reminder, your m is of course the slope, and I'm going to go ahead and box all the slopes just so we can see the differences here. And then our h and our k represent a point that's on the line. So hk is a point, and I'm going to go ahead and highlight these in two different colors. I'll do h in blue, and notice that h is going to be the number inside. I should probably get those signs as well. That will become important pretty soon. And then, of course, k is going to be our number on the outside. Number, 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 number. So, we are going to use those three components to figure out which line goes through these two points. Well, the first thing we might want to discuss is, and I'll try to give you two methods at once, we might want to look at the slope. And we should know two ways to figure out the slope. Um, one method to find our slope is a formula that's given to you on the test. It's on your formula sheet. And that's your y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Or maybe a better way to think about it is the second y minus the first y over the second x minus the first x. And so I'm actually going to annotate my points like that. I'm going to say that 3 halves is the first x, which makes negative 1 half the second x. 5 is my first y, which makes 8 my second y. So now we plug everything in. Um, I actually really like to put parentheses around these just so we don't forget the signs. And notice how there is a minus in between each set of parentheses. That way we won't drop a negative when we plug things in. And let's see if, I underst if we understand what I'm saying. So the second y was 8. The first y is 5. Nothing to worry about there. The second x was negative 1 half. Don't forget the sign. And the first x is 3 halves. Have a little bit of math to do, but nothing terrible. 8 minus 5 is 3. The denominator is a little more challenging, but they were actually very nice to you. They gave you two fractions that have a common denominator, and when you do when you add or subtract fractions with a common denominator, you keep the denominator the same and just work the top. Negative one minus three more halves gives us negative four halves. And then we also might want to simplify that. Negative four divided by two fancy fraction is negative two. You'll notice that the slope ended up with only one negative. There isn't one on the top, there is one on the bottom. And we should remember that a positive divided by a negative is always a negative. If you don't remember, use your calculator. But that gives me a slope of negative 3 halves. So I'm going to take a quick second and label this as option 1. So option 1 lets us eliminate two equations of our line, specifically a and b, because we know the slope has to be negative 3 halves, which is definitely c or d. But I promised you a second option, and this one uses less, ar less arithmetic, fewer formulas, um, and instead focuses on graphing. So if you like graphing, this is a great way to check your work, and I'm just going to do a really rough sketch here. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch in my graph. And when I say my graph, I really just mean the two points they gave us. Notice that my x is 3 halves. 3 divided by 2, we should probably remember or work on our calculator. That's 1.5. And I have another x that's negative 1 half. So I'm just going to go, let's say that this is positive 1, positive 2, negative 1, negative 2, just based on the x's, 3 halves and negative 1 half. And then the y's, um, I have to go to 5 and 8. So let's just say that this is 5 and this is 8. doesn't really matter. And now I'm going to graph the two points. My first point, I'll do in green, 1.5, comma 5. And my second point, I'll do in pink. No, we already use that. I'll do it in blue. Negative 1 half, comma 8. Well, why did I just graph those? Well, because if you know what the two points look like, 
then you will know what the slope is. Imagine if you connected these two points, would this line be going down or going up? And hopefully we remember we read graphs from left to right. This graph is going down. And as soon as, as, soon as you see that it's going down, that's a negative slope. And so we know it has to be C or D. All right, then we go to our second part. The second part, and I'm gonna jump back to option one, is actually building our equation. So here's what we know so far. We know our equation is y, or f of x, is equal to negative three halves times x minus something plus something. But the problem is we have two different points. We have the one in green and the one in blue. So I'm actually gonna do a little or here because there are two different ways we can write this and both of them are correct. So let's see which one ends up being the one that matches an answer. The first one is minus three halves plus five. And the second one is minus negative one half. Don't forget you have to put the extra negative in there plus eight. Now, I just said you had to put the extra negative, but those of you who are comfortable with HK form will realize, well, wait, whenever we have two negatives, what do we change that to? Oh, that's right. We change that to just a positive. And because it's a positive, you also might remember that sometimes we just say you do the opposite of H. So because this was a negative one-half, we wrote a positive one-half in here. All right, now do either of these match our answers? The first one, C, oh, look what they did here. They gave us a negative one-half trying to trick us. It needs to be a positive, so it can't be C. Let's look at D. Negative three-halves, X minus three-halves, looking like the green one so far, plus five. Yes, that's it. We found option D. Good to go. Now the other thing you could have done is you could have graphed each of these or you could have worked backwards from the equations and found the points. You need to be good at HK form though. You need to realize that this point is the point positive one half positive eight and this is the point positive three halves positive five. Don't forget the opposite of H. Did they give us either of these points? Well they didn't give us positive one half comma eight but they did give us the other and that still gives us a second way to check that it's D.